You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Max, you said before we went on on the air, you know, you're not an organizer. You're like a media person. And uh, David and I have, for the last year or so, kind of straddled that line. David has has lived most of his life in the labor movement as purely an organizer. And, and you know, so everybody on, listening on the radio, maybe uh, you don't know if you don't follow him on Twitter. David is going to be transitioning away from the show over the, over the, past, over the next month or so because, uh, you know, the reason that we wanted to start this is... Is that we we wanted it to be an organizing tool, and it takes a lot of time, right? And and you know, David is the president of his local union, and he's got a lot of responsibilities, and so he felt like he's just not able to, you know, do enough of the real kind of organizing work. They've got campaigns that they're doing uh, outside of his shop, you know, and, and so he wants to to focus more time on that as opposed to the media aspect of it. And so, you know, Max, I'm interested in how 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 do you feel like media can be used as an organizing tool as a media person and and you mentioned a ceiling what is the ceiling there and how should people like david and i kind of think about our role in the labor movement and and where should we you know spend our time and 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 you know i don't i've got a really hard time with it as well um I'm going to at least be sticking it a little bit longer than with it a little bit longer than david but i'm interested in your thoughts max we're going to hear that on the other side stay tuned you're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host David Story on the line. We've got Dr. Maximilian Alvarez of the Working People Podcast and Editor-in-Chief of the Real News Network. So, like I said on the other side of the break, David is going to be transitioning out of the show over the next month or so to devote more of his time to, like, actual, not media organizing work. And David, was there anything that, that, that you wanted to throw out there that I, that I didn't highlight on the other side? No, I mean, I would just say... You know, I do not have an aversion to what we're doing. I think what we're doing is extremely important work. I think what Max does is extremely important work. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there doing this type of work that's, you know, it, it's, that's, I, I mean, if it hadn't have been for Max, I, I, I mean, it, and I've never told Max this, but I think you would agree. If it hadn't have been for Max really jump-starting us when we, before we ever even got on air, mm -hmm. I don't think we would have seen the traction uh, that we did early mm -hmm. on. But but and right. and so and I say that, and, and also to say that you know I've listened to all these podcasts and I love them. Every everywhere I go, whether I'm at work. Uh, what I've got my headphones in and I'm constantly learning. So mm -hmm. it's not that I have an aversion to it and I don't think it's not that I don't think that it's unimportant. It right. is the problem that I have is splitting time mm -hmm. and devote because this for what it, for what anybody thinks uh, out there that listens to a podcast every week mm -hmm. and it's an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours long, uh, the amount of energy that yeah. goes into that yeah. the prior week i mean it is just overwhelming you know and mm -hmm. i'm i'm already at 60 hours a, a week working at least another 10 to 15 with the union mm -hmm. I, I mean there's only so many hours in a day so you right. know i just want people to know that i think this is good work i will i will be I will be so happy to be able to listen to the show and not have to <laughs> schedule and yeah. and deal with the back end. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. And I don't and it's not that I don't think this is not a good organizing tool. I think it's an yeah. ex exceptional organizing tool. It's just not it's not what my my passion is mm -hmm. talking to people face to face and shaking hands and feeling the the camaraderie and the love that you do not get uh across or through a radio 
show or through a screen. It's just, right. it's so impersonal for me. Yeah. And I just, I can't, it's been difficult. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, Max, what are your thoughts? Well, my first thought is, um, you know, perhaps for someone who never anticipated uh, or never saw themselves for being on the radio, um, David has been a gift to left media and labor media um, over these past months um, because of what you just said, David. I mean, I think that in a lot of ways, my own kind of desire to to use media uh, in a way that is useful to working people, right? And to offer media as something that can be an organizing tool, that can be a tool for building solidarity amongst working people, not only in the United States, but internationally, right? I know that that's a very uphill battle, right? But, um, you know, really I am guided by that same desire that you were talking about, right, to to have those human moments, right, to really kind of um, listen to people, right, and, and to genuinely communicate that that listening is not conditional, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to sit and listen to your story only so long as you say the right thing, yeah. right? Or, or you, you give me what I'm looking for. I really just, you know, in a lot of ways, imagine myself as kind of sitting at this table in the digi- in this fast paced kind of digital world, wanting to kind of hold someone's hand, look them in the eye and, and assure them that, I'm here to listen to them for an hour and a half uh, talk about their life and and make sure that they know that their life and their story matters, um, that their story deserves to be told, and that they're not alone in this world, right? And and I think that that you know if we can, the, we'll never be able to, like you said, David, it'll never be a replacement for the kind of face to face kind of interaction that you need to have as an organizer. But I think it's like the the you know the closer that we can get the close the more that we strive to get to that point with media the more that we try to bridge that kind of gap between us in a world where we are already so alienated from one another uh, the better. Yeah. What What about you, Jacob? I you know I I, I def I agree with that. I think it can't you know like. Uh, you know, like David, I've got I've got stuff in in that I'm doing in my union, and I'm on the elections committee now, and so the last few weeks have been uh, <clears throat> have been pretty busy for me. <laughs> you know, and I think, but here's the thing, because I hear the hesitation in your voice as well, and I think what yeah. people have to people that listen to the show, and especially you know, not the listeners in our radio audience, the people that are going to hear the show in washington state or portland Mm. or baltimore or you know maybe even uh uh, austin they don't they well maybe they do but there is so little boots on the ground organizing going on in our state Mm -hmm. that you we look at it as we're trying to fill so many roles that are not being filled and it's it's you know uh, unlike what is happening in in the rest of the nation you yeah. know where you have a, already a large uh a, a you know a, a large coalition of people that are doing multiple things i could easily do this show and en- mm-hmm. and enjoy the hell out of it but right but also there, recognizing that what, by doing so this much, show I'm, I'm not doing I'm, something exactly, else right yeah exactly. that's that's my biggest you know because like david said there's so much work that needs to be done and and because of the fact that there are people out there nationally that are doing really good work you know like you like kim kelly like jane mcalevy and so you know um when when we started it the we were hoping to really and 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 we've heard we've heard a few stories uh, that that kind of give us a little bit of hope, but we wanted to really affect the local media scene and and do more locally. And so, um, hey, you know, I don't know money to this crap hole. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm very big on being extremely particular about who and what I give my money to, mm-hmm. and the fact that we're giving this amount of money to this piece of 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 uh this terrible radio station that puts out the the worst (laughs) propaganda that i've ever heard Uh, and that's really 
disheartening to me to know yeah. that they're they're buying their dinners with that with our money. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I've got mixed feelings about it. I, I think, I hope that we're doing good work, but there's so much work that needs to be done and only so many people to do it here in Alabama. So I, I don't know. Uh, we're going to be talking to Max some more on the other side. Stay tuned. All right, folks, welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host David Story on the line. We've got Dr. Maximilian Alvarez from the Working People's Podcast, the editor-in-chief of The Real News Network, and and we've been talking about the role of media in organizing the future of the show and things like that. And, you know, look, like, uh, you know, there's definitely definitely a down vibe, obviously, because, like, David's leaving over the next month, and he is, he, he brings, like, a wealth of knowledge that I don't have. You know, he's been doing this work since the AFL was formed, right? You know, I mean, he's been here forever. He's but been here for ages. Thing. And, you know, uh, the 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 campaign loss. But look, we've got yeah. o- over the last over the last just the last week, David and I have seen more like testimonials of how this show has affected people than we have probably over the show's existence. You know, yeah. we've gotten multiple people on Twitter saying that like our interviews with the Amazon workers uh, convinced people to join their organizing committee on their jobs. Uh, they've sent us, they've they've told us um, through DMs and on Twitter and on Facebook and things like that that like, look, we sent your, uh, you know, we we sent some of your clips to some of our coworkers yeah. and they've joined the organizing committee. They've joined the union. Now they're gonna, you know, we're like, you have been an inspiration to us. And so, you know, like, I don't want to get too down. I'm gonna be doing the show for a, uh, you know, for a long time moving forward. Uh, but you know, there, there is there is a certain amount of like like. Uh, you know, we, every everybody's been a bit gut punched. Uh, o- you know, f- f- uh, over the last week or so. But you know, Max, do you have anything to say say on that? I mean, I think it's a really it's a really important point to to underscore, right? I mean, like you said, um, the elephant in the room is that we're all very bone weary and and yeah. um, I think very upset, disappointed about the results of the union election in Bessemer. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, all of us invested, I think, a lot of hope and a lot of energy right into mm-hmm. this uh, union election, into the workers and organizers there. We became close with a lot of them. Right. Yeah. And, and and we really we really cared about the outcome of this because we yeah. knew what it meant, I guess, to, to kind of maybe circle back to what we were talking about before the break. Right. Is that it wasn't just, you know. It, it, it's never just an election, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, and it's our job, I believe, as media makers to help other people around the country understand that, that it's not just an election with a number count. Mm-hmm. It is life, the lives of yeah. working people um, who are trying to live with dignity, who are trying to provide for their family, who are trying to make the most out of the one time that we have to go around on this earth, right? Yeah. You know, to 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 live and honor their own humanity in a way that, you know, allows them to go on vacation, right? That allows them to, you know, have more say in their working conditions. I know that I won't wax too philosophic here, but I think that, you know, one of the reasons for that exhaustion and 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 you know, the all the emotions that we're feeling right now. Right. Is like, you know, I I think we just have to feel them. I think we have to process Mm -hmm. them. I don't think we should run away from them. Um, But I think that, you know, I just wanted to kind of be upfront with people that, you know, the the, obviously we are all losing uh, a lot with um, with David kind of departing from the show. But I think that, you know, his reasons make tons of sense uh, for doing so. Um, but, you know, as far as kind of our feelings about the Amazon um, union election, right, I think that that, you know, there is a real kind of basic point that, um, you know, the, the, the people who whose lives are going to be impacted by this are the ones that we're thinking about. And that's mm-hmm. that's why we're so, you know, kind of deflated right now. Yeah. Yeah. And and, you know, I've seen a lot of um a lot of talk radio personalities across the state, uh, some conservative politicians, uh, conservative think tank folks, um, conservative politicians across the country really gloating over the workers' loss here in Bessemer. And um, I've had to not respond, you know, because I, I'm, you know, it, 
really in my feelings about it um, because you know, like like you you know it, it, the if I responded, it would have been it it wouldn't have been good for me or or, or for it, it would have just it would have been very emotional and 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 I'm still very you know I'm still very emotional about it you know like like you said Max like this isn't this isn't you know like a like a damn game to us. You know, like we we got close to the organizers. Like there, I you know, th- there are brothers and sisters now. Josh Brewer, Randy Hadley, Jennifer, uh, 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 you know, Jennifer Bates, Daryl Richardson. You know, those folks like they're my family now, and I care about them, and I care about their lives and the lives of their coworkers and what's going to happen to them. And like. Uh, it's you know it's it's not a game and and when I've seen these these folks gloating about like it's here's, I, it, here's it's literally raised my it's I have been red in the face here's about something it. That, I mean, that people that those people need to come to grips with and it's something that I try to bridge the gap being the old white guy in the room uh, if you're a conservative listener out there and and you reveled in the loss of Amazon and in the past year you've called into this station and talked about getting people off of social services getting people out of uh you know food stamps snap programs Mm -hmm. uh all of these all of these services that you constantly rail against these government services that provide for the least among us and you turn around and and cheer on people losing this election when this these elections is what brings people out of that poverty level and moves them into uh you know uh, a situation to where they can actually provide for their families without having mm-hmm. to humble themselves and anybody that thinks that you know the welfare queen is is alive and, and well today is absolute as uh, an absolute <laughs> yeah. idiot yeah these people humble themselves because they have to and this provides the um, unionism provides them a path to begin to provide for their families mm-hmm. and retire with dignity without having yeah. to rely on on subsidies for the rest of their lives so you are you are in effect if you're one of those people that were out there cheering last week you are in effect spotting your own self mm-hmm. you know it's 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 insanity you yeah. there there's no there's no uh, there's no other path either we start paying people a living wage mm-hmm. or we provide for their their living through social services there is no other path it's just as simple as that yeah well and it gets i mean like uh for for conservative listeners and i guess just to be upfront, you know i've said this on my show working people many many times um i grew up very conservative right i mm-hmm. uh, i spent half of my life as a very catholic conservative um you know first generation mexican-american and so I, I i get where this sentiment comes from i felt it myself mm-hmm. and the more that i have learned about uh what david is talking about um the more that i've realized that uh yeah in fact the very thing that i as a conservative wanted to see in the world was actually uh being made uh, harder to achieve by <laughs> you know things like this and it actually gets worse right because um you know, I was on I was on the hills uh, rising this this week, kind of talking about this. It's not just that, as Caleb Brennan, uh, who recently wrote a great piece for us at the Real News about the Amazon Union election, pointed out. Amazon, as the second largest private employer in the United States, is among the the companies that employs the most workers who are on SNAP benefits, uh, who receive mm-hmm. SNAP benefits, like David was saying. So if you want those those workers to not be, you know, quote unquote, dependent on social services like that, then you should take a hard look at why so many Amazon workers depend on those right. social services and how perhaps having a union could uh, help lift them up to a a higher socioeconomic strata. But on top of that, to add to what David said, is uh, if you want to talk about welfare queens, Amazon is probably the biggest welfare queen in the country, right? I don't like that term. I'm not going to keep using it, but just to kind of use the term, the common language that we have right now, it's Amazon doesn't pay taxes. Uh, I mean, like, and they have, they make so much money that it's unfathomable. It's as unfathomable 
to imagine the the wealth and power that Amazon has. It's it's as unfathomable to us as the size of the universe, right? I can't emphasize that enough. You 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 do not know how much power and money this company has. And then when you when you know, but when you understand that, and then you realize that well, they're not actually paying taxes, and in fact, it's worse than that. We're paying them, yeah, right, both on the front end and on the back end. Remember the circus that we had a couple of years ago when Amazon wanted to build its second headquarters, yeah. right, and and every and it wanted to make every city in the country tap dance for it and and say we're going to give you this man, much uh, tax breaks, right? We're going to give you this much in rebates. We're going to give this much of our social infrastructure uh, to you and let you do what you want with it, right? So Amazon's wealth and power is the result of sucking up all of those social uh, resources that are supposed to kind of provide for the people of this country and are instead going into the coffers of this private entity uh, whose who's, uh, founder and CEO is the richest man in, in the damn world, right? But then also on the back end, right? Like I said, like, you know, they're getting tax rebates. So so in effect, yeah, if you want to talk about welfare queens, um, wow. you know, there here you go. Amazon is it. Right. The, th- the thing that you are pissed off about may be right, but you're pissed off about the wrong person yeah, or the, the wrong, wrong entity. People. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and, our favorite politician just this past week put out, you know, and it's it, it's it's known to us, but it's not known to a lot of our listeners. Forty nine of the top 50 corporations in the United States paid zero dollars in taxes yeah. this past year. Now, I don't know, you know. We're talking about, you know, raising the corporate taxes, not even to the level that it was before Trump. Yeah, before Trump took office, but just getting it back to a fair, fair tax rate. I mean, you're talking about God, ungodly amounts of money that that these corporations refuse to pay. And it's it is off the backs of the working people of the United States that everything in this country happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, one of the things that that. Uh, that somebody said was that oh this means that they're happy and this means that they're well taken care of and that's just silly like we know we know the conditions they work under we know the pay that they get the median salary there is like $15 an hour for a logistics job like the propaganda that they've been able to do around the $15 an hour wage is amazing because $15 an hour was envisioned as a minimum wage for like a service employee not as a median wage for a logistics employee this was supposed to be a job to support a family and they've able to just totally turn it into a mick job it's, it's absurd we're going to be right back with max stay tuned you're listening to the valley labor report with david story and jacob morrison Folks, welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host David Story. We've got on the line Dr. Maximilian Alvarez. He is the host of the Working People Podcast, the editor-in-chief of the Real News Network. We've been talking about uh, the Amazon election, uh, the loss by the workers in the NLRB election. Um, and, you know, like li- like I said, you know, there was, uh, there, there was somebody that was saying that this means that the workers are happy and that they were well taken care of. And you can go through and listen to any of our interviews. I would, rec- I would recommend even more than ours, honestly, going and, and listening to Max's interviews with Jennifer and Daryl because they were able to get into it more. But you can listen to ours, too. Too. They're, like the working conditions there are not good, right? And they don't get paid enough for what they do. And any other time people could agree to that because this is logistics work. Like this is a job that in a prior in a prior era, you could support a family on one income. Okay, and so uh, the the loss does not mean that they're wo- the, the loss of the workers, the win by the company does not mean that they're well taken care of. It means that they were scared out of uh, voting for uh, v- voting voting to organize because I mean we know for a fact that Amazon violated the law. We know for a fact that they did everything within the law that is coercive and intimidating in nature to get people to vote against the union, uh, to get people to vote against organizing for better wages and working conditions because um, 
they don't they don't want to do that. They don't want to they don't want to make sure that their workers are well taken care of. And so I don't want to hear anything about like oh well they're t- well taken care of. That's a silly that's a silly position to hold. And, and especially and you know I don't know like. I, the organizers there, I know they poured their heart and soul into it. They worked day in and day out. They missed dinner with families. They missed time with uh, with wives and children and 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 communities and churches. Uh, you know, I mean, they took like they have been in this fight for twenty four seven for the past six months, and they've given it everything that they had. You know. I'm sure that if they had stuff to do over again, that there would there may be things organizing wise, technique, strategy that they would do a bit differently. But uh, but you know, primarily, I think, especially for the purpose of this show, like the the we've got to we've got to talk about and we've got to broaden the understanding of the terrible, awful, no good, illegal, coercive tactics that Amazon employed. Um, you know, but. Uh, um, and you know, and Max, if you've got if you've got any anything else to to say about that, but the the next thing, you know, uh, I wonder about. You said that you had some self reflection on covering the Amazon campaign, and there are a lot of media that that's going to be going through some some kind of self reflection and, and and perhaps even some self criticism on on the way it was covered and how 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 everybody how we covered it. What you know, in, any thoughts on? what we should foreground in the loss of the election and then some reflection on the media in 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 this election yeah for sure i mean i guess like i'll i'll kind of work my way through the progression there and we may have to talk about the media thing after the next break but um i think it's really important what you just laid out right and i think one thing that i i want to underscore for people is that for a country uh, that feels like it has the right um, to judge the the uh, democracies of other countries, right? Uh, Americans are very quick to kind of assume that this union election unfolded in a way that was fair and democratic. It was not. And in fact, the as you guys uh, have been really uh, exceptional at pointing out week after week, Right. Any union election in in any workforce that is trying to unionize is going to be facing an incredibly Mm -hmm. steep uphill battle uh, that is the product of decades and even centuries of anti-worker culture and anti-worker legislation that has been designed uh, to put all the cards in the hands of the bosses and to make things as difficult as possible for workers uh, to to unionize and have democracy in the workplace, right? So if, we, if we're if we re- really rushing to kind of say, well, you know, the fair, democratic, you know, and, and, and objective kind of process decided emphatically that workers do not want a union, it's very much uh, more complicated than that. Um, But, you know, before we get to the media thing, I think I just want to kind of really, really put my cards on the table here and talk about where I'm at right now, right? We we learned yesterday that the union vote was defeated, uh, soundly Mm -hmm. defeated by the process that the NLRB has set up. We know that the RWDSU is now kind of filing a motion uh, demanding that the NLRB investigate Amazon's illegal union busting tactics over the course of this election. And there's a lot that, uh, a lot of information that still needs to come out about that. So here's where I am in all of this. Yeah. Well, right? and really quick though, I mean, it's it's theoretically possible that even under fair circumstances the union could have lost, but I think the extent of their law breaking is going to give the union a free chance to do a rerun if they want it. And you know, that's really Amazon's that's really on Amazon that that they broke the law so fragrantly that if if the union wants to and if they believe they've got a shot, that they're going to have another go at this, I think. But I'm I'm sorry. I just I wanted to throw that out there. No, I mean, I think I think you're absolutely right. And I mean, these are discussions that need to happen. Right. There needs to be a lot of honest uh, and and I think, um, you know, serious reflection on the election itself, the union campaign. Uh, as I have said before, um, I'm not an organizer. I don't feel it's my place to really kind of participate in those discussions. I just want to learn what I can from them. But, you know, what I was saying is that at the moment, I I can't even really bring myself to do that just yet. Right. You know, when we were kids 
And, and, you know, you remember those moments when, you know, your friends just kept kind of running along, but you needed to kind of just sit on a rock, give them a wave and say, you know, you guys go on ahead. I'll, I'll catch up. Yeah. Right. That's, that's basically where I'm at right now. Right. I see, I see a lot of takes flying around online, a lot of people rushing to make, you know, bold conclusions uh, about this election from a picture that I think still needs to get a lot clearer before we can do an effective and, and respectful uh, post mortem or whatever you want to call it. I personally don't like that term. Um, I also see, you know, a lot of people rushing to judge the union as if a lot of thought did not go into this campaign and the decisions that were made. You can think they're the wrong decisions, but do not delude yourself into thinking that the union was just bumbling its way through this. We know that's right. not true. But of course, you know, I, I also see a lot of smart and useful analysis being offered and a lot of love and, and solidarity being expressed towards the workers and organizers in Bessemer, you know, for, for, for showing us what bravery and, and a righteous cause truly looks like, right? I, I see a lot of stuff happening right now, but frankly, I just need to sit on a rock uh, and, and, you know, I'll catch up in a bit. You know, yeah. I, I need time to process. And maybe that's because I'm too thin skinned. Right. Maybe this is where we get to the media thing. <laughs> maybe I'm just too much of a sap. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and anyone who knows anything about me knows that it's no secret that I am a big, dumb, emotional sap. Right. I mean, I can't I can't even focus on the news that I need to keep track of right now as it comes out. Because as we were saying, I, all I can think about are the workers and organizers back there. You know, all I can they're all I'm thinking about right now. Um I got I got to see just a small sliver of the marathon that you were talking about, J Jacob, the marathon that they've been running for many months. Daryl mm -hmm. Richardson, Jennifer Bates, Big Mike, Randy Hadley, Joshua Brewer, Adam Obernauer, all yeah. of the many people that I'm also leaving out. Right. I just want to give them all a big mm -hmm. hug and remind them that we yeah. love them and we are with them always. And now, you know, I am I am left reflecting on what that means for us in media, like, you know, what that means for me in, in, in my role in the media. Um, I, I don't know, but I, that's, that's kind of what I want to reflect on. But frankly, um, you know, right now I just don't have it in me to kind of think about what steps to take away from this. I'm just in it present at the moment, thinking about the human beings behind this, this Amazon union election. It's, yeah. it's so difficult for me. And this is kind of where, and I'm not going to criticize the media uh, on air. I'll say I'll make that <laughs> caveat. But it is very difficult for me as a trained organizer and as someone that has organized workplaces and as someone that has sit for the past, what, two months in zoom calls with over 100 of and a, a, a 100 plus mm -hmm. of some of the greatest organizing minds in this nation uh some of my best friends that 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 i've uh, made along the way to criticize these people without understanding what went on in mm -hmm. in those calls is is flippant you know and and yeah. to, and and i realize the media plays a part and i think critique is an important part of that but without knowing and and a lot of them would say well y'all didn't tell us well no we're not going to tell you we yeah. don't we, we're not going to sit here and lay out all the cards on the table for you to report on it as this unfolds because who reads those cards right. you know the dealer and the dealer is Amazon. And even after, to try to come in one day after and and critique and make some of the comments that I read was just like, I don't know, man. It's really yeah. it's really hard. It's hard for me to watch because mm -hmm. it's like I said yesterday. You know, the greatest minds are on Twitter. Just ask them <laughs> if you don't believe me. And yeah, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate, yeah. but that's where we're at. But that is where we're at. I think it's incumbent upon the organizers that were doing the work to critique themselves and, mm -hmm. and damn the media. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, like Max said, and like David said, I mean, we, there's just so much, so much love and solidarity flowing from us to those folks in the RWDSU and at Amazon. And so, um, we're going to talk about the mine worker strike on the other side. 
State. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jig. Put it there, boy. We'll show these fascists what a couple of hillbillies can do. Welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison, here with my co-host David Story and Dr. Maximilian Alvarez. And host. I think it's important to point out who's sitting behind me, because my yeah. wife said, hey, who's sitting behind me? Oh, yeah, you can't. I don't know if you can, but uh, but so, um, like, like I've said... Uh, David is going to be transitioning away from the show, and uh, we're bringing on Adam Keller. He is an educator, labor organizer in the area that both of us uh, have known for quite some time. He's a great guy, and so we're, he's going to be he's going to be filling some pretty big shoes. Uh, but we're really excited to, to bring him on. So yeah, Adam Adam has been uh, hanging out with us the past couple of weeks and learning the ropes. So Adam. Good yeah. morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, there's no way I can feel David's shoes, but I'll definitely try. <laughs> you may, you yeah. can feel my shoes. You may not be able to feel my pants, but I can promise you, <laughs> you can feel my shoes. <laughs> my shoes aren't too big. My pants, on the other hand, has kind of increased with my uh, numerical age bracket, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, today, today, you know, we're just we're we're just hanging out. We're in our fields today, and and you know, there's like a uh, you know, that w- with all the back uh, backseat quarterback, and you know, one of the things was that oh, they should have stuck with the original unit. You know, originally they wanted to, they only wanted fifteen the, to to go for the fifteen hundred member unit, um, and and Amazon said no, you got to do it wall to wall, and they had the cards to to do a wall to wall election, and so they went forward with that decision, and it's hard to fault them for that, you know. High Hindsight maybe has some more clarity. Clarity, maybe they should have fought the battle to keep the unit smaller. But you know, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, with where they were, it seemed it seemed like the right decision to us. You know, it, at the time, certainly. But you know, what, yeah, and that what was do you something do? that my my wife had texted me and said, would it not have been easier to try to organize a smaller unit, you know, and break these folks down? And that was that was kind yeah. of what the it, they did try to go minority unit right. uh, in the beginning and. You know, yeah. who knows? I mean, yeah. it's you got to throw a touchdown pass every once in a while mm-hmm. and, and try to air it out, and they and they tried to air it out. And I thought, you know, whenever whenever they went after the fifteen hundred person unit, and I've seen uh, McAlevey comment on they didn't know the number. They knew the number. The number was they were going after a minority unit, which was just these package handlers. And when the company tried to force their hand, and they had all these cards signed, then they thought, mm-hmm. "Hey, yep, what, what the hell? It. Let's let's yeah. let's make a run." And I don't think I don't right. think you can second guess that kind of thought process because it is a coin toss. Is yeah. it easier to organize a minority unit? Absolutely. But when you're sitting on almost two thousand cards, cards right yeah. then. And you're like, I don't know, man. Uh, but at the same time, when you did not realize that the turnover is 20 to 50 employees per day, and I think that's right. something that has gotten glossed over and nobody is looking at in a in a 6,000 6, uh, employee workplace that 20 to 50 of those people are walking out, getting walked out mm-hmm. every day. That is, I don't care. Uh, it, Jesus could come yeah. to Amazon Bessemer and have a different difficult time yeah. feeding the masses with that kind of constant turnover right right i mean it's like you know when uh like if you have a bathtub right and you got the faucet on but you also got the drain open yeah. right so water's coming in water's going out it's like trying to organize that right, right. over the course of like six months and even longer right it right. is a, a steep uphill climb again i want to i want to remind folks of what i said in the last segment i don't think it's my place to really talk about kind of the organizing strategy i will listen and learn right now uh i am too in my fields as jacob said to really be able mm-hmm. to track that and i just want to send love and solidarity out to to all the workers and organizers there i respect and understand uh, that there are people for whom this provides like an essential learning period to talk about things from the organizing side Mm -hmm. and more power to them the only thing that i would just kind of say in addition to what david was saying really just kind of like 
I'm speaking more from a media side and really urging people who are jumping in to armchair quarterback this thing and offer their suggestions for what the union should have done and talk about the union organizers as if they were bumbling their way through this and didn't know what they were doing. Right. Again, you know, these people have been around for a long time. Like I Mm -hmm. walked through the RWDSU Mid-South Council headquarters with Randy Hadley He pointed out to me like all the certificates of successful union drives going back decades, including Plymouth. Right. They know what they're doing. They have reasons for making the decisions that they were made. You can say that in retrospect, they were the wrong decisions. But please, please do not presume that a lot of thought and strategy and debate went into this. And the one other thing that I wanted to kind of uh, direct that point to is, you know, I think. I, I personally couldn't get through Jay McAlevey's piece. I think it's there's a lot of valuable wisdom in there, but I just don't have the emotional capacity to deal with this right now. And I, I question whether or not now is the right time to come out with it. But I, I imagine she wrote it because there is a risk of people becoming so deflated by this defeat that they they exit from the struggle and, and she needed to push against that. Again, that's that's not my, you know, it's not my place to kind of judge that. Um, but one thing that I've seen a lot of people kind of using that article to criticize is the union's decision to not do house calls and to instead focus on uh, people coming in and out of this massive Amazon facility, right? That may sound to you, again, as someone who maybe hasn't organized or who hasn't been there, it may sound crazy. They mm-hmm. they talked about this for many days and weeks right. and, and determined that this was the right choice for them. Again, because like David said, this is a massive facility. There are over 6,000 people working there. That's a lot of house calls, yeah. right? Especially when you take, if you've ever even canvassed, right, for a political candidate, you know that house calls, you have a very low rate of success or return. Most people don't answer. A lot of people say, oh, can you come back later? You leave something on the door, right? You get a very low rate of return on that. And so, you know, at least consider for a second that the union did think that they may be able to uh, connect with more people who had to right. come in and out of the Amazon workplace than to spend their human resources to uh, knock on doors all over the the county, uh, not knowing whether or not people were actually going to be there. But, you know, this is something, and this is what I was talking about before the break, is somebody critiquing from outside that don't understand. One thing that a lot of people don't understand was the fact that these workers are working 12-hour shifts. They're on this crazy-ass three-on, three-off, four-on, four-off Mm-hmm. type of you don't know uh, what days they these employees are working what days they're not they're working 12 hours a day when they get home after you've worked 12 hours a day you've got 12 hours to eat sleep and prepare for work tomorrow and i think yeah. it was the right call what i mean do you really want people knocking on doors when you just worked off of a 12-hour shift from uh six yesterday evening to six this morning or you know what have you so i think you know that it yeah. goes back to the and i'm not gonna keep beating her up because yeah. i don't like her but that's my personal opinion uh but you know that's that's the problem with critiquing mm-hmm. when you're not involved yeah it's easy to read your book and say the book says this is the way you do it but guess what this ain't a damn you know it, it ain't a damn uh if, if if it was as easy as reading a book and this is how you win, then every every damn person out there would have a union today. But it ain't that way. We're dealing with humans. We're dealing with human nature. We're dealing with extremely uh, tremendous amount of dynamics. Mm-hmm. And 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 to always go back to this book, the book. Yeah. Uh, if the book so- worked, everybody would be organized. If you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. 
If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments and release them throughout the week. We do upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps, so to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, go to thevalleylaborreport.transistor.fm slash subscribe. We've got a website where uh, you can buy our hat, thevalleylaborreport.org. You can also get some uh, stickers there as well. And finally, if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report. As you can tell, if you are watching the screen, uh, the, the stream, we've got uh, we we've we've got a messed up monitor. So we're going to uh, we're, we're going to be either having to pay for a repair for that or I mean, it's my fault. So. I'm going to be paying for at least some of it out of my pocket uh, and maybe some out of the show funds, but, you know, have to going to have to repair, pay to repair that or get a new one, which is a bummer. But, you know, anyway, 